This is Twit. Ah, Boeing. Big, big update. Big update on Boeing Starliner, Rod. Big. Oh, I'm sorry. Big you woke breaking me up. news. Wait, what? What? Uh, it's delayed again because of Alves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, and in this case, though, now this was interesting. So before. <laughs> wow. Before, <laughs> you know, we're we're flying these things without crews. So the valves were stuck and wouldn't open reliably and 13 of them, you know, some percentage of those. So that was a problem. This time they said had the vet, had the flight not had astronauts on it, they would have proceeded. But they had a buzzing valve, which sounds like it was stuck in a partially open position. Is that what that, you understand? That's right. And and this isn't a valve. Uh, this isn't a valve. that. How, how did that sound, Rod? Do it again. I'm a buzzing valve. So. <laughs> No, no, the, the, the valve is actually not on the Starliner spacecraft at all. So this is not a Boeing issue. This is not a Starliner issue at oh, all. And it's, it's on the it's, booster? It's on the, the Atlas V rocket built by okay. United Launch Alliance. And of course, so this space, this, this story is from space.com, but everyone else is uh, uh, all the regular players are covering it too. But during the countdown, uh, like a, a shortly before, you know, they were, they were getting close to the, to the launch by an hour or two ahead of uh, ahead of launch, they um, uh, the folks at Atlas uh, at U- ULA started detecting vibrations in a different subsystem that they have seen before, and it's a, it's a vibration that is caused by what they they call it a buzzing valve. It's a valve that is uh, opening and, and closing so fast that it makes like uh-huh. a buzzing type vibration that they can pick up in some of the excel- other accelerometers or sensors that are on the rocket itself and this is a a a valve that is a it's a pressure relief valve on the upper stage the centaur stage uh it's a liquid oxygen system so it's just a relief valve so it doesn't get too pressurized it's really important and they they want to make sure that it works all right and if it was any other mission because ula had seen this exact issue before and similar uh, types of valve issues in the past. If it was any other mission, like if they were launching a spy satellite or a commercial satellite, they would just flip a switch and cycle the valve so that it would open and shut and then see if that fixed it. And then if it did, you know, hooray. And that's what they have done every time they've seen this issue in the past. However, because there are astronauts on board Starliner at the time, Butch Wilmore, Sonny Williams, on board uh, the spacecraft uh, already waiting to lift off. They have these very specific flight rules at United Launch Alliance and Boeing and NASA that says you cannot change the state of the vehicle while the astronauts are on board. And that is like the the key phrase. If they're going to cycle the valve open and shut, they're changing the state of the vehicle just to do that one thing, uh, even though they think it would be fine, their flight rules say they can't do that. And so mm-hmm. because of that, they have to scrub the launch, which is kind of a little bit frustrating because an hour or two after the launch scrub, the buzzing was gone after the astronauts got off because they cycled the valve and it stopped. Right. So, uh, so, uh, but this is the first time that they're launching people on board. So they're going to dot all their eyes. They're going to cross all their T's. And, uh, and so, you know, if it hadn't been for those flight rules, uh, then they wouldn't have done that, but they want to make sure that this is the first flight crewed flight of a brand new spacecraft. They want to make sure that they, they follow all of those things to the letter because there are reasons to have those flight rules in place. You don't want to change. So, uh, you don't want to make, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, exceptions uh, every time yeah. because that's how nasty, that's how you get into slippery slopes. So, so, so not to belabor the story too much, but so on the one hand they say, yeah, you know, we would have gone if it weren't for the astronauts for being extra careful, but then for whatever reason, they decided to or had to roll the rocket back in the barn instead of leaving it on the pad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is Which actually a really good point because buzzing that rapidly opening and shutting that suggests the, a, a really fast cycle for this valve. And the valves are only rated for a certain number of cycles, right? Of opening and shutting. And uh, it's something on the order of, I think it was it's either 20,000 or 200,000. It's one of those two. Uh, I think it, I think it's 200,000, but they, they weren't sure exactly how fast it was opening and shutting and how many times it had cycled. And they, that's what they wanted to double check. Like if it's close to the, the, the maximum life, which was, I think about 180, 
a thousand times, then they would have some margin, you know, before the next launch. But if it had been going on for quite some time, it could have crossed that margin and then mm. been a suspect valve. So what do you want to do? Do you want to uh, replace the valve or not? And so they decided to replace the valve just to be safe uh, because they, they, you know, they did some reviews and they thought maybe it's at the end of its design life. Uh, and it takes them some time. So they, they rolled it back into their VIF, their vehicle integration facility uh, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. They're going to replace the valve and it's going to take them a few days to do that. And their next launch try will be May 10th. No, pardon me. May 10th was this week. May 17th. <laughs> or after. Yeah. Oh, May 17th or after. Yeah. And so yeah. it'll be, it, you know, it could be the next time that you and I meet, uh, they, they could be counting down again to launch the rocket uh, if, if they think that they're, they're ready for that. So. Okay. Well, then I won't make any more nasty Boeing comments since it was a rocket problem. All right. Next story also from space.com. James Webb Space Telescope gets a weather report from Exoplanet. And I'll just set this up by saying this was, <laughs> this blows my mind. 280 light years from Earth, we're getting an indication of not just atmospheric components, which they've done before, but actual indications of weather patterns. And all these kinds of things are at this point still kind of Sherlock Holmesian, mostly indirect you know, it takes a lot of intuition. You have to make certain uh, deductive assumptions. And in this case, uh, if I have the story right, this measurement uh, is done by comparing the spectra of the star it's circling to the spectra of the star when the planet is illuminated by that star off to the side. And then subtracting out the differential gives you some kind of weather, but also the shift that you're getting of that spectra is what's telling you what kind of weather you're getting. Is that right? Yeah, this, this is an interesting one. And, and I think you mentioned 280 light years, but actually this one that if we're on the, the, the same story, it's 55 Cancri E, uh, which is 41 light years. Oh, uh, no, I was talking far, about so. a whole nother star. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but same idea. Yeah. Well, this one is interesting because 55 Cancri E is not like a new exoplanet, but it is one that, that NASA and scientists have known have had a, uh, a, an atmosphere for quite some time. Uh, in fact, uh, when I first wrote about it, and this is many years ago, uh, more than I would like to count, uh, they, it was described oh, as like a, a river, baby. <laughs> it was described Jeez. as like a cotton candy planet or, mm. or a puffy planet. Cause it had this real kind of puffed up, uh, uh, atmosphere, uh, around it. And this is, you know, where they were, they were studying it with, with, uh, kind of some older space telescopes. The study that we're talking about uh, is new because they use James Webb, the James Webb Space Telescope to do it. Right. And and so 55 Cancri E, because it has that E in its name, it's uh, uh, apparently it has a, a nickname called Janssen. Johnson. Jan I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It has two S's, two N's, a J. I respect the J, uh, but it's one of five planets wow. around around the the fifty five Cancri star, which is uh -huh. much like the sun, and it's in the the constellation Cancer. And the diameter it's about twice the size of Earth, and it's a bit denser than our planet. So they think that it's more like a super Earth. It's larger than Earth, but smaller than Neptune. Uh, and they think that its composition is very rocky, but it had this atmosphere that um, that you know they they thought that it disappeared. It was really puffy. Uh, but it's so close to the sun that this, the star could blow off the atmosphere. It's about 1.4 million miles away from the star. That's like super close, uh, uh, much closer than than Mercury is uh, to our sun. And so that the surface was probably super molten, like a, like a big old lava ocean world. Uh, and in a stunning uh, discovery with James Webb, that's they stunning. Found, stunning. They found that uh, that the atmosphere is back that it came back basically they 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 watched as it dwindled away they thought it got burned up by the the star and james webb has found that it's grown back and that is like the big wow moment that something is happening on this planet to revitalize its atmosphere uh and uh and and, and keep it going and I, I think it's just perplexing uh this this just the strange planet this puffy planet you know, uh, got stripped of its atmosphere, grew it back, and there's there's other stuff uh, happening on it that they're they're uh, it's making it a very tantalizing target, very weird planet for sure. Making it a very saucy story. Uh, <laughs> all right, and as our our third and final story, uh, you, you know, you just can't have a week go by without something happening with our pal Elon Musk. <laughs> so Elon has decided that he understands the question of aliens. Yes. 
Uh, well, uh, not not the question of it, but at least he's kind of given his stance on it. So uh, this week uh, we we were uh, surprised actually to find out that uh, Elon Musk, a SpaceX founder and CEO, he was talking uh, in a panel at the 2024 uh, Mil uh, Milken Institute Global Conference in Los Angeles, Rod. So around the corner from you yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, on, on on Tuesday, and uh, and he was asked, uh, you know, like how he felt about. Uh, uh, you know, new life and new forms of civilization, you know, are there aliens out there or not? Uh, you know, and, and he actually mentioned, you know, during that talk that if we send probes, we might be able to find those remains of long dead alien civilizations out there. Uh, but he, he did say that he didn't feel that aliens have like visited us, you know, to, I don't know, go cow tipping or abduct, you know, the people out, you know, from, from, from their, the from their, seeds, uh, yeah. from their beds. Yeah. I wasn't going to say hayseeds. I almost said bumpkins, but I wasn't oh. going to say it. I almost, <laughs> but, well, you know, it's a long way to drive to grab people and do well, cavity searches after you've done a couple hundred thousand of them. It's like, come on. Exactly. You know, you I don't know, like one or two. While. Okay. But like, you know, 20 yeah. years on, but what he said, and I quote, he says, I don't see any evidence of aliens and, and uh, why, would that matter uh, coming from anyone? Well, here is Elon Musk uh, with SpaceX. It's a company that has like 6,000 uh, star Starlinks active um, in, in in orbit. And he says uh, SpaceX with, you know, ha has roughly 6,000 satellites and not once have they ever had to maneuver around a UFO. I mean, that's pretty compelling, right? There's a lot of space junk up there, but uh, yeah. you would think that if there was a lot of alien traffic, they would have figured out something. Now, the aliens obviously could be very technically sophisticated they could have cloaking devices like the romulans no and the no, no. The, we don't know. the answer don't is know. much easier than that he is an alien we all oh. know he's an alien oh he's in it and is that what you're just, saying he's in on the deal and he's trying to hide the fact that they've taken over all levels of government and that makes it very simple and you know <laughs> I, i'm gonna get quoted on this and that'll be a bad moment for all of us Hey, if you enjoyed this clip be sure to check out this week in space you can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.